What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 113 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today we have a live commentary double header as we will be taking on Fire Nord and Juventus in the Champions League group stage. If you missed the last episode go check it out as always it was quite a memorable start to our Champions League campaign. There was a good half an hour kind of talk about the squad, about the signings we made, kind of keeping you guys up to date with what happened during the pre-season. And yeah, today, slightly shorter episode, but of course a live com double header. You never know what's going to happen in these. Anyway, let's get into the first game. It's at home against Far Nord, as is the Juventus game that we'll be following this one. In terms of the team for today's game, a few changes to which are kind of forced compared to the team that we used last episode. In goal, Young comes back into the squad, although he is still struggling from his strained stomach muscle injury. I feel like he's just an valuable addition and it's kind of very important that we have him in the side elsewhere you'll notice that Austin is going to start up front for us Elmo struggling a little bit with his match sharpness and condition as a result Austin who did get a goal against um and Senate St. Petersburg going to come into the squad today the Australian you know he showed kind of some good signs I feel like in the last live com want to see more of him today and at left mid we have to go with Cabral uh, the young Argentine and the reason for that being is that Paul Smith is out suspended of course a massive miss for us definitely our main player really Paul Smith and uh, Cabral with some big shoes to fill out there in that position anyway in terms of our team it's Fairly good, you know, we've got that one suspension to Paul Smith, really. Mosca has picked up an injury as well. He's fractured his cheekbone, of course, the player out on loan who does have injury proneness, a player who I've been eagerly keeping an eye out on, praying he wasn't going to get injuries. But a fractured cheekbone, you know, it's not the end of the world, I guess you could say. Anyway, on the bench we have Jason Hall, Rodrigo Romero, uh, Juan uh, Manuel Calvo, Elmo Mora, Pereira and Tuzon. Who's on, of course, the main player last year. This year, he's declined a little bit as a footballer. We've had some good players coming through and breaking into the squad. As a result, going to be on the bench today. Either way, let's submit our team. I'm hoping for another top, top performance like we had last time out. If we could get something here, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Looking at how they're going to line up. Farnord electing to play a 4-3-3, a system that has caused us some trouble in the past. However, I'm confident that our players can make something happen here, of course. Uh, going to be a big ask still. I believe we are the number three seeds in our group, and I believe Zenit are number two seeds, with Farnord being the number four seeds. So in reality, this is a game we do go into with an air of expectation to at least try and get a result here against the Dutch side. And uh, yeah, of course, Ludwig Young back in the squad, a nice player to have back in. Hopefully not going to aggravate his injury, but I feel like an injured Young is probably better than Romero for us. Anyway, Cabal... The uh, man who's coming in for Smith with the ball down the line. Hellick cuts inside. Cabral hits it, and it was deflected, I think, off Austin. It might have been a cross. Hard to tell, though. The ball was just kind of ploughed into the box. The effort, though, saved by the keeper. Although, we're on the ball again here. Mraz. Options on the overlap. Smith, Austin, Fred through Hellick, and Hellick scores. The Polish player with the goal. Austin with a lovely little assist. And while he has the player preferred move, looks for the pass rather than attempting to score, maybe that's going to be a useful one to him to have here. Nice little bit of uh, kind of play. Mraz with a beautiful free ball. Austin just nods it on, helps it on its way. Halleck takes it quite wide, lets the ball roll on, and then just squeezes it in at the near post as the keeper comes maraudering out there. And well, you'd have to say after 10 minutes, ideal start, and it might get better. JJ on the ball, up to Helic again, this time intercepted, and now Farnord going to come on the attack. Their free strikers could cause us some problems, although Villalba deals with it. Tries to get the ball to Helic, given away, but Austin now through. He's got pace. Can he finish it? He can't. He blasts it wide, but that is what he offers us, Nick Austin. He is so rapid on the ball. A great player just to be able to ping a ball over the top two. And, well, he probably should have done a lot better there. Having already got one assist in the game, you would have really backed him then with the confidence that he's on at the moment to bury the shot there. Unfortunately, not to be in. With 25 minutes gone, it is still going to be 1-0. But we have had the two clear-cut chances, and we have been on top, and we might get a chance here. Mraz coming through. Can he cross the ball? He can. Austin there. Saved by the keeper this time. Cabral with the rebound. A disappointing effort in the end. Didn't get a lot of power on it. A good chance there for Nick Austin. Double our lead, not his first miss of the game, of course. Perhaps a little bit of a tougher opportunity. Wasn't it considered a clear-cut chance? But regardless, you would have backed us to do a little bit more there. And, well, as the game remains 1-0, it's going to get me a little bit more nervous. And the reason it's going to get me more nervous is because in this game, Farnold have not done a lot. But it only takes a second to score a goal. And, well, they found the goal, haven't they? Their first shot on target of the game and Farnold draw level and for all the dominance we've really had in the first half for the chances we've created for the opportunities we've squandered we're gonna we're gonna pay for them 
Farnold with the effort here just squeezed in and while well, the keeper maybe could do more Ludwig Jung went down to ground quite early and the ball was hit high into the roof of the net not directed into a bottom corner perhaps a little bit cruel to blame the keeper really but at half time going to be a disappointing 1-1 draw not happy with how that's gone boys want to get the players fired up here this is a game that we very much have a chance to win. Looking at it, Cabral struggling a little bit out on the left. I'm going to move Mraz out there, and then we're going to bring in Pereira out on the right-hand side. Mraz, a player who I've not really brought in to play left midfield, but I feel like in this game, Cabral struggling a little bit with match fitness. Um, obviously, playing behind Pulse. Can we score from kickoff? Oh, a real opportunity there, but the tackle came in. Uh, but no, with Paul Smith out injured, of course, Cabral not our first choice left back, uh, left mid. Not had a ton, ton of time to get match fitness, so not really surprising. He isn't going to last the whole game and he's going to have to go off at, well, just after half time. Either way, chance for Feyenoord there, but we collect it. Now can we counter? Helic through to Austin. He's fast, the Australian. He misses another one. Oh dear, this is, it's just not his day today, Austin. Really isn't, although... Well, I don't know what's happened here. I think this is the start of a new replay following the previous one immediately. Austin with a chance. Austin, please. Got a score eventually, surely. Four clear-cut chances he's now missed. It's been a day to forget so far for Nick Austin. Part of me wants to take him off, but the fact he's getting all these chances means he must be doing something right and he just needs to finish them. Young holds on to that effort, though, which is a nice stop by him. The number the number 18, you kind of feel for him at the moment. The chances are keep falling his way. He keeps creating the space for himself, the pacey forward. He's just he's just not getting the, the shots away and not diverting them goalwards and... Oh, it's you, you empathise from Farnod coming forward here. We head it clear. Valalba with the clearance. Now Helic knocks it down to Mraz. It's a ball through to Austin again. He's the last man. You've got to be going off. Shong Maker, or however you say that guy's name. We'll call him the Shoemaker. That's what we'll call him. The Shoemaker is off. It was a professional foul. Not entirely surprising. It's a red card. And Farnod now down a man. There's 25 minutes left in this game. I was about to pause it and go more attacking, but there might be a chance here. Ball cleared away. JJ picks it up, though. Pereira now. Looks like they're sticking with a 4-3-3 shape, but with two forwards. Helix there. Take a bow. The Polish player scores his third goal of the season. I was about to pass comment on the fact Farnard. They've, they've been quite brave here because they were playing a 4-3-3 with kind of a flat free forward. And it seems like they've just taken off one of their strikers. So they're kind of giving up a lot of the midfield. Usually, obviously, if you go down to 10 men... You'd kind of just take off one of your strikers and leave one striker up top with four in midfield. Going to be a tough ask for them now. Either way, looking at this game, we are absolutely dominating it. We need another goal, though. I'm going to bring on Elmo, I think, for Austin, who's not had the greatest game. JJ struggled a little bit as well. I think we'll bring in Calvo just to hopefully see out the game. 15 minutes left in this game, getting some fresh legs on in that defensive midfield department. Uh, I think it's going to be quite useful for us. And, uh, well, you'd have to say we've outplayed Farnold here, although they have a set-piece ball in. And Mustafa's given away a penalty. What have you done? Why have you done that, Mustafa? We've been all over them this game. They're down a man. Well, we had a penalty save in the last game. We're going to need another one today. It's not Romero in goal. It's Young, of course. Brad stepping up, shoots and scores. And, well, what has happened in this game? Farnord, they're, they're FM in us good and proper right now. I'm going to change the team, actually, and change the system. We are going to go... More attacking, and we're, we're going to go for this game, I feel like, at this point. I feel like, given the current situation, given the fact that we are... Uh, well, we, we have the man advantage. We're going to switch to the 4 2 3 one attack. We're going to try and get a goal here and see what we can do. If we concede again, what has happened? Bouchard, can we break away now? Up to Helic, already has one goal to his name. In fact, no, he doesn't. He has two. I'm a liar. Farnord with the ball, though. We are committing a lot of men forward here. Frigier, back to Young. Don't screw up the back pass. That's all I ask. Oh, my gosh. Farnord coming through. Frigier with a tackle, but it goes as far as Karaka. Now with Van den Engel. Villalba, though, with the tackle. Now can we break away here? It's 2-2. Helic. Graphite. Can he go down the line? Pereira inside to Bouchard. Elmo. Options on ahead. Pereira crosses it. Mraz is there at the back post. That is a really nicely worked goal. It's 3-2 here. Now we can drop everyone deeper. Now we can drop and just kind of hold on to what we have. We've committed men forward, kind of seeking that goal, and it's come our way. And, well, I thought we were going to screw this up. I mean, there is still time for them to score, but you'd have to think at this point this game is going to be over and we are going to be fighting at, well, for another day, really. 3-2. 3-2, right. 
Am I still on attacking? I think I am. Either way, this was a really nicely worked goal. Elmo there, involved in the build-up. Pereira crosses it in, and it's just Mraz at the back post, a player who I praised uh, last game, of course, in on loan. You know, he has got that option to buy. He's done a good job for us there. I'm going to change the counter for the last three minutes. Hopefully, it's not going to matter. This should have been an easy win. It could have been an easy win. We made it difficult for ourselves. But despite that, we are going to come away with all three points here. Impressive victory, really, against Farnord. What happened in the other game? Juventus did win as well. Does mean that whoever wins out of ourselves in Juventus in the next game puts themselves in pole position to get out of the group at this very early stage. That was a really impressive performance by us there. Uh, good to see us getting a lot of goals in Europe again. Of course, scored four in the last game. Defensively, a little bit, perhaps, concerning the fact we conceded two and that we did concede, of course, whilst down... Uh, or whilst upper man, but regardless, uh, a good result there. Either way, we have got one more game to cover this live com. It's going to be against Juventus. There's a few games in between. You don't, guys don't want to see them. Let's get into it. I will join you guys in a second for match day. Okay, guys, we are back here for the second game of this live com, taking on Juventus. And I've just seen who Juventus' manager is, and I'm really confused about everything in life. That's right, Fabio Barini, aged only 39, which is quite young, really, to be Juventus manager. Is Juventus manager? Um, yeah, that's a thing. It, it's his first ever job, apparently. Um, yeah, I mean, don't really know what to tell you. We'll just take a quick look at the Juventus side, because they are the number one seed in our group. They've got Park Shin here. He is their best player. He looks quite good. 31 years old, South Korean, 148 international goals. That is absolutely unreal. Looking through the rest of their team, they've got Para. Uh, person who doesn't look that great, if I'm all, all honest, in all honesty. Gustavo Pizarro looks okay. They've got some good players here, though, and of course they will have, I do believe, unless they've sold him without telling me, our former man, Walter Del Sol. Walter, where where are you, Walt? He's injured. Well, that's anticlimactic. He's got food poisoning, right? Who, who did it? Who in our team snuck into the hotel and poisoned our former player? Either way, actually, they've got two defenders missing, so that might play into our favour just a little bit. Regardless, though, still a very, very good squad here that Juventus have, and it's not going to be easy for us today. Looks like they may line up with a 4-3-3 from what we can see here. Either way, our team for today's game is actually a little bit changed, and it's not really changes that I want to make, it's changes that I've very much been forced into making. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, really. Looking at our team, you'll notice Young is in goal. We then have Vilalba, Graphite, and Mustafa, who are fairly normal in uh, inclusions in the team. We then have Romero playing at centre-back today, and that is because Frigere is out injured. And if we look here, uh, you can see he's out for three to four weeks, which is not great. And uh, it does mean he may miss this game. Well, he does miss this game, but he may miss the next game against Juventus next live com as well, which really wouldn't be ideal. You'll also notice that Helic is out injured. He's out for two to three weeks with a sprained ankle. Tuzon is out injured with a lower back stress fracture for four to five weeks. Elmo was actually out with a short-term injury, but we have had an international break since the Feyenoord game, which is why there's quite a big gap between the last game and today's game. Um, so at least he's back and on the bench for us. But all in all, it's a change team, but it still has you know a fairly strong core. Of course, Romero coming into the side in midfield, it all looks the same, except that in an unforced change, I'm actually going to be playing Luis Pereira uh, here at uh, right midfield. The 21-year-old Uruguayan, he's actually really performed well just in general in all competitions, and I feel like he deserves a chance uh, in this game today, of course. Uh, coming in ahead of him normally has been Jan Mraz, who's more of a your kind of traditional, I guess, centre mid who we play out wide. Uh, you look at Pereira here, he is kind of just what you expect from a winger. He's very fast, he's explosive, and uh, not particularly technically gifted, but you can see for us so far this year, he's got seven goals and five assists in all competitions. So, uh, yeah, we're going to give him a chance for that reason. Anyway, up front for today's game, we're going to go with Austin, who was pretty disappointing against Feyenoord. Hopefully he can actually get his shooting boots on today. He's actually improving a lot, and I can notice changes in his stats. His finishing has gone up by one already this year. I think maybe his teamwork's gone up, his agility and a few other stats have improved. It's kind of cool. and I, I mentioned it last live comp, but I love just kind of clicking on a player and then just looking at how they've improved as a player. You can kind of see how the acceleration, pace and agility have really climbed of late. You know, acceleration and pace at 17, you compare that to when he started and his pace was 15.6. It, it's good to see improvements and, well, the guy is still a very young player and he's going to have another chance to prove himself today. Anyway, alongside him, we're going to go with Mulu. 
So that's that. On the bench, we have Mraz, Taquez, Jason Hull, Elmo, Mora, Calvo, Romero. Pretty standard bench, really. Uh, hopefully, we can get a good result here, although it's going to be a pretty tricky tie. Um, but yeah, I have confidence in our players. We are at home against Juventus, which I think does help us a little bit. Of course, a defeat here is certainly not the end of the world. If Farnold and Zenit St. Petersburg draw and we win, it's perfect. You know, if we lose and one of the two teams wins, it's still pretty good for us. We're underdogs in this game. The players know that. I know that. But we have caused upsets in this stage of the competition before. We definitely didn't do that last year, where teams like Manchester City and, well, uh, Bayern Munich put us to the sword. But I feel like today we are more than capable of trying to at least give Juventus a good game. I feel like we've proven so far in this group stage that... You know, we are deserved of being a regular Champions League team and we want to show now that we can really fight with the big boys and that's what we're going to try and do here. Pereira, the new man, tries to get in the ball, cleared away, but Bouchard, Graphite, options in the centre, goes to Mulu. Mulu scores, take a bow, my son. Nine minutes on the clock, it's 1-0. And it's Graphite with the assist, but Pereira, an addition to the squad who I kind of decided to bring in, has had a helping hand in this play here. Bouchard... Nice little dinked ball out wide, and it's Graphite with the ball in. It's an enticing ball, a Mulu on the half volley. And in fact, it wasn't a half volley, it was just on the volley. It was a nice finisher. I got carried away there. Couldn't even tell what kind of goal it was. It was that good. Beautiful little kind of scissor kick there, and well, 1 0 up, 25 minutes gone. Juventus coming into this game slowly, but in truth, you know, it's been a game of few chances so far. Both teams with five shots. We've had a lot more of possession, which is a little bit surprising taking on Juventus. But they are coming forward with the ball here. And Park Shin, the player we identified before with it, out wide, crosses it in. Probably should have been a goal there. I know it was an acute angle, but Juventus have ricocheted a shot off the post then from what couldn't have been more than five yards out. And, well, it's still 1-0 going into the break. And we'll be... Oh, well, oh, I've jinxed it, haven't I? I've jinxed it. Long shot, going to ping in. Park Shin. Oh, why did I think we made it to the break? Edward Dube with the goal. I cursed it. I cursed it. Doesn't happen often that you concede and a replay starts with heart 30 seconds left of the half. It's happened there, and now I look like a fool. Juventus, they've not switched off at the end of the half. Our team had. That was poor defending there, and well, that does change my team talk quite a bit. Going to tell the players I'm not happy with the performance. Want to get them fired up. Worth noting, we've not got any players on bookings, which is quite nice. That's something that we have fallen victim to in the past. It's just unnecessary red cards in Europe. Must admit, in recent years, we have kind of put that behind us for the most part. That said, we have given away a few penalties. Uh, looks like Paul Smith has picked up a knock. It's a back strain of some kind. That is not the kind of injury you keep a player on for in FM. We'll bring in Mraz to go out onto the left-hand side of the Slovenian. We have a set piece here. Austin crosses in. Romero, Mustafa is there. The Egyptian titan. He goes up for the header. He doesn't get it. It bubbles around and somehow it falls to him in the six-yard box for the goal. Austin with the cross in. Near post flick on by Romero. Mustafa's there on the volley. Take a bow, my son. He is towering above everyone. I love the fact in 3D you can tell he's a giant at six foot six. He is loving that. And it's 2-1 here. And the, well, the, the Apex fans behind the goals are in raptures right now. What a goal that was. We need to keep kind of switched on in this game. It's been a very tight game, but I'm very happy with how we are performing at the moment. I don't want to make any unnecessary changes, overcomplicate things. You know, 30 minutes left in this game. Both teams have had chances. It's just one of those games where it's going to be set up by who takes their chances. So far, we've taken ours, but there is time left in this game, and Juventus is actually going to bring the ball forward here. Pizarro. Options out on the left here for Juventus. Armagan. Can he get the ball in? He can't. Young with a lovely save there. Was that a clear cut chance for Juventus? It may well have been. Regardless, great save. The header there from the corner as well, going to go flying over. 20 minutes left of this game. Part of me wants to go way more defensive, but that has cost us so many times in the past. I'm going to take off Villalba, who's on a booking and is struggling a little bit with fitness. We'll bring in Jason Hall for him. Uh, part of me wants to go more defensive, but it's cost us in games before. The tricky thing with switching to a defensive system is... If you, if you don't concede, you feel like a genius. If you concede, then you feel like you've caused your own downfall and well. Is that offside? It's not offside, is it? Park Shin has scored. Maybe I should have gone more defensive. It's all lifts and butts, isn't it? Swings and roundabouts. Uh, Park Shin, he, he breaks through. He's 31 years old, the South Korean, but he found some opportunities there. And Young probably should do better. Doesn't even move. He's caught flat-footed. 14 minutes left in this game. It's 2-2 here. 
Juventus grown into this game quite a bit. I'd kind of settle for the draw at this point, but at the same time, we're going to stick with what we know. In terms of changes, I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to take off Mulu, I think. He's looking nervous. I'm going to bring in Elmo. I want Elmo to do the business, hopefully, for us. We have 10 minutes left in this game. If we could hold on for 2-2, two, two, that'd be good. As I said, I'm not going to switch to a more defensive system. I feel like in the past, and you guys probably have seen this from experience in the save, when we've gone defensive, we've conceded more. Now, this might be one of those exceptions to the rule, and I'm going to look like a fool. But we can't live with regret. I'd rather stay on attacking and try and get something more from this game than go more defensive. And Elmo might have a chance here. Switch it to Pereira. Intercepted only as far as Graphite, who tries a very ambitious pass, and well, Juventus with lots of men surging forward here. Park Shin might be through again, shoots Young this time, does make a save. A clear chance there for Juventus, away on the break. Park Shin will feel like he should have done a lot better for them there, but it's a good stop by the keeper in the end, and hopefully that is going to be all she wrote for this game. If we finish now at 2-2, I'll be happy. There is still a few minutes left in this game, but the players, they've performed well today. 30 seconds left. Well, Juventus scored at this kind of time before. Let's not concede now. Ball out wide. Ball in. Cool. Clear it. Someone get it out. Mraz, just boot it out, my son. Clears it. Doesn't even get it to Elmo's feet. Park Shin, he's offside. It's going to finish 2-2 here. This is not a bad performance, really. Um, it was an exciting game. We perhaps will feel a little bit hard done by not to win it, ultimately. But nevertheless, a great performance. Joe Bouchard getting the Man of the Match award. A 9.0 rating for him. Looking at the other game, it was a draw. That is actually the ideal result, really, for us. And, um, yeah, we can't complain about not winning this game, but at the same time, a good result for us there. Anyway, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. Ultimately, two fairly good results. Definitely happy with them. Puts us in a good position in our Champions League group. If we were to beat Juventus in the rematch, which I believe is the first game of next episode, we would secure a spot in the knockout stages, which would be a fantastic achievement to do as of course we didn't do that last year. Either way guys, hopefully you did enjoy this episode. If you did, please do smash the like button. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.